This, this is SWBC this. Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. Now, your host, Shannon Gross. Shannon Gross. Welcome to beautiful Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco for what hopefully is not our last show, but it's a possibility if the Cowboys don't take care of business on Sunday. This will be the last time we do this this year. But we're not going to think about that because we're going to think positive thoughts, hopefully, on this show. Wow, man. And we're I gonna, can't believe you really said that. For real, man. Wow, I put it out in the universe because it is a possibility. The Cowboys are only a three-and-a-half-point favorite, so we'll get to that in a minute, though. But first, get to our guest of honor in a minute, too. Most guests of honor – can't sit upright in their chair in this large, ba- tall bar stool and their feet touch the floor and they still have some bend in their knees. Right. Our guest of honor can. But first, to my right, Chris Arnold, welcome back to the show. What's going on, Shannon? Good. Is this Nate? your second or third oh, time? Oh, Jesse Hart is listening. Third time yeah. on this <laughs> he'll, get su- he'll get disappointed because I'm not going to speak that much today. Yeah. <laughs> Nate, don't show – don't – don't say anything that you don't want Chris to know about in okay. the text message. Exactly. Because, because, you know, he'll get it sent to him. Nate, welcome to the show, Nate well, Newton. I'm glad to be here, man. I'm excited, man. Cowboys going to go all the way, baby. Do you want to introduce our guest of honor to the right? Jim, Jim, Let's Jim, go. Jim, what's up, what's Jim, up, what's Jim, up, what's Jim, up, Jim, what's up, what's up, what's up, Welcome to the show, Jim. Yo, 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 what's up, yeah. what's up, what's up? A former a Sun Devil, man, yep. Arizona Sun Devil. Yeah. Arizona, Arizona, for- Arizona, Arizona, Arizona State. State. Arizona State. Arizona State. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, got to put that state in there. He from Jersey. Yes. Yeah. That's Definitely a long way from home. Yeah, yeah. long way. Yeah. Long way. Did you grow up an Eagles fan being from Jersey? No. No? I grew up on north. I grew up by the Giants. <laughs> okay. 25 minutes outside the mail lands. All right. A former teammate of yours that I saw today wanted me to tell you hi. The great Drew Pearson. Oh, yeah. yeah. Drew, me and Drew grew the up original. about 20 minutes from each other. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Did y'all, wow. know, did y'all know about each other growing up? No, because he was 10 years old. He's the old guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He played with Joe Theismann. He was yeah, a, he, he played was with Joe Theismann. But, uh, in high school. Obviously, did he really? Yeah, I did yeah. know that. In high school. And obviously, when he got here, we knew each other because he would always talk about where I grew up. Where we were big time. We only wow. lost four games in wow. four years. Wow. Yeah, and he um, came out and hang down, hang out down there. It's 20 minutes away from each other. Yeah. South so, River and Madeline. So what are you doing? What are you up to these days? What do you got going on? I am owning a – it's um, commercial insurance. We do we do health insurance. We do uh, financial 401Ks and all financial life insurance and things of that nature. And I'm a part owner of it, so – that's what I'm doing now. Oh, that's just Spending part of time. what he do. He always coaching somewhere. <laughs> always coaching somewhere. I'm coaching, but it's little kids. I'm working with little kids. Oh, okay. Yeah, and just uh, getting them lined up. Right, getting right, them right. Lined up. But I do that and right now, um, and we've been doing it. We opened up the company, and it's going well. Very good. It's going well. Very cool. Co- once coaching gets in your blood, you can't get it out, can you? No, it's like golf. Once you right. start hitting that ball. It's yeah. over with, huh? No question. Wow. I mean, no Jim question. done, like, coached all different kind of yes. levels yeah, of football. What? I mean, he even did, like, the spring leagues and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Let's two of the spring that, leagues. Jeff. Let's go through that. I went through the AAF. I went through um, the XFL. Yep. I obviously coached in the NFL with the Cowboys. Yep. I did uh, University of Houston, San Jose State, and Colorado. See? In college. And I've done all those things. Right. And then while I was doing that, I owned the Allstate agent. Right, agency. Right. That's how I knew about insurance, and I got back. I always into that. had that in the back pocket. Yes, yes. Yeah. No question. No question. I always have. I have to be doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, great. what do you think about the state of this Cowboys team, the the team as a whole, heading into the playoffs? Well, um, we were talking before the show. I feel this is going to be one of the most physical games that the Cowboys will play. The 49ers are a physical team. I watched them last week. And they are probably one of the most physical teams in the NFL. And this is going to be a knockdown, drag out kind of a game. You know, they got receivers, Debo Samuels, who gets in a running back position. And he, hey, they better be ready. They better be ready because this is going to be a war. And I'm going with the Cowboys. And when you said they were uh, three-point favorites, 
at home, that means they're six-point favorites, mm-hmm. if you know anything about gambling. <laughs> so they got, six, they got six points. But it's going to be a good game. The thing the Cowboys have got to do is bow up this week. They yeah. got to bow up and make sure that they know that don't tell me, hey, this is the, the time. It is the time because there ain't no, hey, it's one and done. If tell, you don't get it done. You said something about meanness, man, before the show. Yeah. Talk about that meanness you hey, talking man, about. Hey, you man, gotta, you, you know how it is. You got to let them know. Right. This ain't no joke. You <laughs> might, you know, it's just like when we play. Right, right. You know, every once in a while, you might have to go over there and bump it. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. Right. Or you got to knock them down and say, hey, that ain't the, all you're going to get. That's right. I'm going to give you more and let you know I'm coming for you. You know what? Somebody yeah. need it. Give me a hand. Somebody to grab <laughs> Garoppolo's thumb. <laughs> you can't just grab it. Yeah. There's a, you there's a way emotion. to do yeah, it. Yeah, there's a way to In do it. In the pile up. Yeah. Let me help you. Oh. Yeah. oh, man. Oh, man. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, you got to be smart man. about yeah. these things. Right. Yes. Right. Nate, you, yes. Nate, Nate you can't just roundhouse them in the ribs. You got to get the elbow in there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just got to make like you're making a move. And yeah. then you use the elbow. That's it. And you got to know this. The uh, nerve points. Yeah. Right. You gotta do the nerve <laughs> red, red and white. Red and white. <laughs> exactly. Red and white taught them all of that right. crazy stuff, man. Right. Yeah. yeah. You gotta deaden that nerve. <laughs> By the end of the game, that nerve has gotta be dead. Right. Nate, we've heard all week, heard Jim say it a while ago. We've talked about it. You hear it on, on every show, the physicality. What exactly, for a non football person, what does being physical mean? Does it just mean hitting hard? Does it, what, what does that, physicality mean? That's a part mean? of it. That's, that's number one, to be able to hit hard. But to be able to just take it a step further. Like Jeff said, you have to be smart. But if I'm trying to block a guy, I got to take it a step further. You know, and if I can push him over the pile, or if I can lean on him, you know what I'm saying, if I can get, get in on his legs a little bit more. You know, every time he's got to feel me. It's like in basketball, they call it force. You got to feel the other guy's force. And they got to always, like, like Jeff Coach said, if he, go, if he go for a sack and he almost get there, as long as he's within that step or that two-step rule, it's all right, but he got to lean into yep, him with his yep. shoulder. As long as it's below no the question. neck, you know, you got to lean into him. You got to be able to finish a step beyond the whistle. But you got to be smart about it. And that's what these guys do. They fin- when you see them run block, when you see them, you see the, uh, Debo Samuels. Mm-hmm. You know, when he finished a block, when he finished a run, man, he always trying to lean forward. Yeah, always. No matter whether it's yep. going, running the ball out of the backfield or catching it as a wide receiver, he's always trying to finish forward. What about you, Chris? You, you, we, we hear we, – oh, You want to hear a good st- a subplot? I want to hear a subplot. Here's a good <laughs> subplot for you. This is a juicy subplot. All right, Dan Quinn is the defensive coordinator. Kyle Shanahan is the head coach. Back, oh, a few years ago, when Atlanta Falcons was in the Super Bowl, gave up that big lead, and Tom Brady and the Patriots came back and crushed the Falcons, sucked the life out of the entire city, right? Right. I personally have always blamed Kyle Shanahan. Right. Because they decided to throw the ball, even though the running game was still working. Right. You got to let the defense rest up a little bit. Right. And it kept going three and out, three and out, three and out. And then that gave Tom Brady time. Dan Quinn, as the head coach at that time, took the hit. I say this is Dan Quinn's revenge game. It's like, Kyle Shanahan, you cost me a ring. <laughs> You, co- you made everybody think I don't know how to coach a football team in the Super Bowl when I let you be the offensive coordinator and coordinator. Now, they're friends and they know each other. But this revenge, and this is I'm going to the Super Bowl this year, not you. So Dan Quinn is going to have to have that defense ready for Kyle Shanahan's offense, and all they're going to do is run now. See, Kyle Shanahan learned in that Super Bowl, I better run the ball a lot. And what you will see in this game on Sunday is – not just regular old running. That's right. You're going to see pre-snap motion. You're going to see RPOs. You're going to see guys that's normally not the running back, like Sam Debo. He's not a normal running back. You're going to see all, all 11 players committed to run some kind of way because a quarterback is not that, uh, the elite quarterback. He's not Aaron Rodgers. No, but here's what else you're going to see. You're possibly going to see Trey Lance in this game. Uh-oh. You're possibly going to see him, and the reason is, is just what you said. When you run them RPOs, mm-hmm. he's more of a threat to run an RPO you than go. Jimmy G. Mm-hmm. So you'll possibly see him in there and trying to catch them off balance. He's going to do something that they haven't practiced against. Exactly. That's just the way it is. You have to understand that what they're going to try to do 
is to get them rat hey, rattled. That's yeah. just the way. And you know, that's why I was saying this subplot, it's like a chess game between Dan Quinn and Kyle Shanahan. Don't get me wrong, uh, Kellen Moore, he's going to have to come up with his best game. And, of course, uh, Dak and all the rest of And Mike McCarthy overseeing it and Bones Fossil better not be scaring nobody. But just <laughs> those two guys alone, Dan Quinn versus Kyle Shanahan, the X's and the O's because literally – the 49ers going to try to run the ball and control the clock and keep the Cowboys' explosive offense off the field. And no you know, question. The, the thing about what I like about Shanahan is he don't have to go, you know, like everybody talking about this new thing, going into your bag. He ain't got to go into his bag. That's what they do. Yeah, that's wing, what they do. A wing T right. style yes. of running the Stuff ball. No question. Seen. Yeah. The yeah. no old school. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you're right about that. That's yeah. what they do. That's what they do. And they yeah. do. And if you yeah. ever watch them play, right. they try, hey, they trying to bully you. Yeah. You yeah. know what Debo means. Right. Oh, yeah. Debo was a bully. <laughs> yeah. I saw Friday. Debo was a yeah. Debo Damn. was a Debo. <laughs> so how, got, do you, how, how do you bicycle. take on a bully? You take on a bully by <laughs> being physical with him yeah. and yeah. letting him know. Right. You know, wow. You he won't take your bike. Yeah, he won't <laughs> take your bike. All right, what let's about take, that, Shannon? You gonna what? take your bike, man? I'm gonna something? take my bike and go to break. Okay. All right. I, feel, All right. I feel pushed around this first segment. I'm gonna come back and see if I can uh, physicality. If I can get yeah. more physical in this second, I don't like the way I started the show. All right. Okay. We're gonna come back in the second segment. Right. I'm gonna okay. start the show again. <laughs> about this won't be the last. Show. Right. Right. I, I thought right. about it. I'm like, I don't like the way that right. that left a bad taste in my mouth. I was mouth. just gonna okay. elbow you a little bit when yeah, you said I don't, that. I don't want that to happen. Pick him up by the phone. I don't want that to happen in the break. All right. You're listening to Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
Cowboys Club here at the Star in Frisco, Texas. And boy, do we have a show for you tonight. I am Shannon Gross. <laughs> and to my right, from 105.3 The Fan, Chris Arnold. Got you down. Welcome back to the show, Chris. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. You like uh, 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Nate, <laughs> to your right. Yeah. Nate Newton, my, yes, uh, my co-host every Wednesday That's night right. here. That's right. And to your right, would you like to introduce your former teammate? Yes, sir. Jim, 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 <laughs> and, yes, and welcome oh, to, to the first of what will be many, because once the yep. Cowboys win this Super yeah, Bowl, buddy. we might keep this show going until training camp. <laughs> Why not? See, remember I talked about being physical? Yes. I went over there and elbowed Shannon. You out And now he's, he changed his own, too. Yeah. See? You yeah. out physical me. Yeah. All right, we're yeah. back for the second segment before we wow, get going. Nice. Nice. At SWBC, customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just to click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure. And the Cowboys' next adventure starts Sunday out at AT&T Stadium where should be an interesting crowd to see if it's uh, – they're having a whiteout out there. So we'll see. Yes. If you watch the game on Sunday, the Rams versus the 49ers, there was yeah, a lot red. of red in that stadium. They took over. They, yep, did. they did. They did. They did. They really did. That was interesting because you would have never uh, – thought that would have happened at SoFi Stadium mm -hmm. in L.A., but they took over. They took over. I was wondering. I'm saying, wait a minute. I'm hearing all this sounds for the <laughs> right. 49ers. Yeah, right, Where right. are the Rams fans right. Even Matthew right. Stafford said that. Yeah. He said, man, they was all over the place. Yeah. Felt like he was we, back in Detroit. We, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say. We had, we he had flashbacks. He yeah. had flashbacks. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> man. Wow. So, to me, this game is going to be really – interesting i've talked myself this is this is who i wanted to play and the further the week has gone along i've listened to nate and nate has taught me out of this is who we want to play no i didn't do jesse talk you and jesse it. did it but i now i'm now what i'm interested in there's some interesting matchups in this game yes there is yes, there george is. kittle and j ron curse yeah debo samuel when he gets in the backfield do they shadow him with michael parsons what do they do with that whole dynamic right. there's a lot of off our defensive line, their offensive line, how physical can the defensive line be? Because that seems to be a theme of games they've lost this year as they talk about we got out physical. We got out, you know, out, out, about the Cowboys. out Yeah, yeah, I know. So, but go ahead. Here's something interesting. I was looking at some stats and uh, sizes. Did you realize Micah Parsons is very similar in size to Lawrence Taylor was? Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that. And he's faster than Lawrence Taylor was coming out of college. That is scary. That. That's the now, he's, yeah, he's big. That. He's bigger than we thought. And he's just getting started. And he's just getting started. So I had a question for you because I asked Nate this a couple of weeks back when Micah said, I guess it was three, four weeks ago, they asked him about football, and he said, football's easy. And I asked Nate if it bothered him, and Nate said, no, because to him it is easy. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Like, yeah. Is it easy <clears throat> to some guys? Is it just that simple that it's it processes quicker or he, he – is it easy? Can it be easy for somebody? It can be easy. It can be easy, but they work at it, and they, you know, people don't know. It's just like Nate will tell you. Michael Irvin would come in early in the morning and work before yeah. everybody was there because I was there, right. and he'd come in, and he'd come late at night. They think Dennis Rodman was the same way in basketball. Mm -hmm. Everybody yep. knows that he, after a game, he might be in a gym. He On might be in a tournament. Bike. That's right. But some people are like that. That's how they make it easy for them. And the way we practice – made it easy for us on the field. The games were easy. The practices right. were hard. Yeah, Jimmy when, you go <laughs> when we did those middle drills, wow. I mean, Oklahoma, they were, yeah, Oklahoma old drills. Oklahoma drills, Ooh. meaning that we were going full, full blow. I mean, so we made the game easy. You can make the game easier. Are there any matchups, Chris, that you're going to be keeping an eye on? Is there anything you're really going to be looking at this game? Yes. I, I want to see um, – I want to see what the offensive line does against the defensive line for the 49ers because the 49ers defensive line is very physical. As Jim and I were talking about this with Nate earlier before we got on the air. They're extremely physical, and our offensive line got a reputation of being good, but they're not the great offensive. First of all, they're not Nate's line. That's the great wall of Dallas. Ain't never been duplicated anywhere. But the, the line that had Travis Frederick as the center, that was a quality line. This year's line, as you could tell, because they had to bring in guys, take guys out. Uh, some guys getting hurt. Uh, Lyle got suspended for a minute. You had to, uh, Terrence still all over the offensive line. Uh, Connor Williams getting, uh, su not suspended, but getting uh, 
benched because he was getting all them penalties. I'm like, what's up with this offensive line? They got some kind of continuity. And I'm really curious to see if they're going to be able to do some run blocking or some uh, blo get their blocking schemes down for the running yeah. game. Because if we don't have a real running game, the Dallas Cowboys cannot assume that the 49ers are going to let Dak just throw the ball. No He's gonna, they're going to have that zone again. They're going to have the shell. They're going to have two co cover two. The one thing that goes in the Cowboys' favor is Zach Martin, the majority of the game, will be over Armstead because he okay. disrupts inside because mm -hmm. of his height, his size, and strength. But you got your best offensive lineman playing against him, so that helps him. Now, the problem they have is Fred Warner, the linebacker. Mm -hmm. How are they going to control him? If they can control those two, then they got an opportunity to make plays on against their offense, or excuse me, their defense. Because you, the can, Cowboys. you can go against Zach Martin one-on-one. -on -one. Uh -huh. Yeah, When you go on right. the other side and you still want to run him, then you double-team with the center and the yes, guard. Yes, yes. But this is, the, this is the key, I think, Jeff, is Tony Pollard. This, yep. His name should be written all over because no remember, when we went against the 49ers, yeah. you know, they weren't going to run against us. So they tried to swing that ball yep, out of yep, the backfield yep. to their no running question. back. Even though we had Ken Norton and all these yeah, guys yeah. athletic enough to do it. I want to see if Fred Warner can repeatedly – Tackle this kid yeah, Paul in open space. field. Yeah, and so that's what you got to do. Yeah. Short, so short handle them, man. You can't just try to dominate him with the run. You got to short handle them a little bit. The other thing to, to pay, pay attention to, when the Cowboys started the season against the Buccaneers in Tampa Bay, they got a, a legitimate front seven. Right. And they stayed in that box thinking because Zeke's all in right. shape. And, Zeke, and they stayed there and Dak exploited them. I don't know if the 49ers are going to stay in any kind of box because over the last month and a half, a lot of these defenses like, no, we're not staying in the box because running game is suspect right now. So they've been daring Dak, and Dak, you know, we show, they've been showing him, uh, you know, that uh, zone defense. I'm wondering because, and Jim, you know this, is their secondary good enough to handle the Cowboys' passing attack? And that's the, what I was about to go with. Most people in the last eight games have been playing Dak with two high safeties. Exactly. That's what Denver did. Mm -hmm. And by me, two the highs. Blueprint. Yeah. They kept those safeties high, and that was the blueprint because they felt they could control the running game. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to run the ball. They have to get movement because that's got to bring a safety down. Right. And that's what you're saying. Yep. So what they have to do is Zeke has got to have a game. He's he got to be the old Zeke. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Pollard. Battering ring. Yeah, and Pollard is going to give him problems because when you get him in space, even inside, he can make plays. He's going to get you five, six yards, yep. and once you're in second and four, as opposed to being in, you know, second and ten, now you got a chance. You can throw or run and still be comfortable if you go into a third down situation. The thing that I, I think Coach uh, Kellum has to do, man, if you if you want to show people who he is, man, it's, you know, Jeff will tell you, it's two ways you can set coverage. It's two ways the defense is going to look at you. Mm -hmm. Whether you got an elite running back, that's going to make that guy – on, on, on situational plays come up and in and out of that box. Right. Or if you got an elite wide receiver, which we do in Amari, yeah. you got to get Amari the ball. That going to open up no a whole question. lot of things. Uh -huh. it, it's just we got – I'm telling you, he is elite. Number 19 for us he is, is elite, yeah. just like yeah. number 19 he, he, for He gets that double yeah. team all the time. Yeah, so but if it, we can force that early, yeah. maybe we can make some things happen. You think? Here's the thing. You're right. Mm. If they're playing two high safeties all mm. the time – the tight ends become more important. Yes. Uh -huh. And the reason is, is because the middle, yeah, the Schultz yeah. becomes more important because the middle opens up. Mm -hmm. That means that that linebacker's got to run with him. Right. Now you open up and you can exploit him a little bit more. And now, they, like I said, you still, now the safety's got to take him. You right. can't let a linebacker cover him. And the thing, the thing that's going to be funny is, is uh, and I heard this on, on the fan, and I heard uh, one of our young uh, reporters say this, if you go back and check the records, we were, we were more uh, a better offensive team. We had two tight ends. They're not great blocking tight ends, but they're always a threat, you know, especially yeah. with Blake yes, Jordan yes. to get down and the Jarrett scene. Yes. Back so, now. so he's yeah, back. No question. So now you can run them two tight ends. Exactly. And, and sometimes you just got to get in the way as a tight end. But when it becomes an obvious passing down, like you said, they're going to have to do something. Oh, they're yeah. Gonna, they're going to have to honor those safeties, yes. I mean, those, those tight ends. Here's a couple of numbers to keep out. Keep in mind, too, this is where you hope the Cowboys do their job. The Cowboys at home average 36 points a game. On the road, they average 26 points a game. The 49ers, for the whole season, 
They average 24 points a game. Yes, they, they, they're pretty so they, consistent. They, they, they can't score with the Cowboys, but the game plan for them is to grind the ball, yes. keep the Cowboys' offense off the field, and we better hope that we don't have to kick a field goal to win this thing. <laughs> I said it. I'm sorry. Well, maybe extra point. Whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm afraid for that mace. Oh, See, man. let's pray for Greg Delay. <laughs> That's why I wanted this matchup is because you you can it's I I'm not scared of Jimmy G. I think this you can make this team one dimensional. The problem to me is the one dimension you can make them is the one the Cowboys struggle with. A good the running run. game, a yeah. physical offensive line, and that Elijah Mitchell when he's healthy he ain't no joke, man. That dude 25. can run. You put mm-hmm. put Debo in the backfield with him, and then and you got some issues. So. That's why I've kind of been talked into be. I was not worried at all Monday until you opened your mouth. Now and now Wednesday, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit worried. I'm. I'm. Yes. I'm not too worried, Jeff, but I'm a little bit worried. But here's the thing: you got to realize these gamblers, the way they operate is they they, they got to make money. This is how they live. Mm-hmm. And if they put you at plus three, like I said, that means six because you got to always give the, the home field team goal. more three and then three more points. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking is they know something. They know something. They've watched the 49ers all year, and they uh-huh. watched the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. So if they're giving you six points in a game like this, and you also got to think, the 49ers just barely made the playoffs. Right. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yes, they are physical. Yes, they do have some talent. But they still have some issues. They still have some issues, and that's where the Cowboys, their coaching staff has to exploit them. Because they're not, you know, they're not the 49ers of the past. Right. They just got after. I thought the Rams. I've always said this. I, I thought Stafford was a stat guy. He's never won a championship. He's never been in the playoffs. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Except I'm not that so, one time when the Cowboys knocked him out. Yeah. But that, he. That but but you saying this guy has got great stats. Yeah. But, but he, he, doesn't, he ain't been nowhere. Yeah, he doesn't understand how okay, to so, win. Okay, so let's look at that 49 team because I, I like what you're saying. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I love what you're saying about these these uh, odds makers know these things. Yeah. And they be studying it and the analytics and the yep. tendencies and, and whatnot. Keep in mind this. The last three games the 49ers have lost. They lost seven games. But the last three that they've lost, the other team has held them under 100 yards total rushing. Mm, that's interesting. So keep in mind, if they, for some reason, if the Cowboys get on a roll, where they can keep the running game in check. For the 40, in other words, 49ers uh, punting the ball all the time. You got a real good chance. And maybe if the Cowboys start the game with a big lead, they might start throwing the ball. <clears throat> they didn't do that against the Rams. They just got patient. The Rams, they were up 17 to nothing, and they said, no, we still going 49 it. We're yep, going to yep, run yep, the ball. Yep. And they caught them. Yeah. So hopefully, I mean, I hate that uh, – they were down by 17 because that's going to make them not feel like, okay, the Cowboys up uh, 14 to nothing. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't scared of them. Chris, you just gave away your key to victory. That's supposed to be in the fourth segment oh. of the show. <laughs> you gave it away in the second segment. I got another one. That's all right. We're good. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's take our next break. When we come back, Chris's second key to victory, yes. more from Jim Jeffcoat, and, and we'll get Nate involved the next segment. You feel like talking next segment, Nate? I mean, I'm, just, I'm just enjoying the conversation. I am, too. This is a good <laughs> show, good man. Yeah, we'll be right one. back. You're listening to Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
Cowboys Crosstalk. WBC Mortgages, Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Welcome back, SWBC Mortgage. Join the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Visit SWBCMortgage.com to find a pro today. Shannon Gross, Chris Arnold, Nate Newton, Jim Jeffcoat on the panel here tonight. And we've been talking a lot of Cowboys, 49ers, football, but let's do something different this segment. Let's give out, let's give out an award. Let's get out, give out an offensive award since we wrapped up the season this, this past weekend and a defensive award. And I want to take it a little different angle. Let's give our Keep Doing What You're Doing Young Man Award. All right? I'll start. We'll start on defense. And pick a player that you like what you see. They don't have to be the most outstanding player. They don't have to be the MVP. But it's someone that you like what they're doing and you want them to keep building on what they're doing and keep doing what you're doing, young man. My guy on defense is, is going to be Randy Gregory this year. Just because we all know his story, great young man, great story. He's overcome a lot of adversity. But he, the violence and the attitude and, the, and just the motor that he has. Are you saying he chooses violence? I'm saying on, on Sundays, <laughs> sometimes Thursdays, sometimes yeah. Mondays. Yes, sometimes he does. Sometimes you have to. He does choose they violence. They make you. I just like what, he's, I like what he's done. I like the way he fits in on this defense. I like what he brings from a personality, from an from a excitement standpoint. I think he's a really good personality on this team, and, and, he, and he plays his butt off on, on game day. And I just – I really like what, what he does. That's my guy on defense. Nate, you have one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, man. But I'm on, I'm on, I'm on a guest to keep Go ahead, doing Jim. what he's doing. Who's your guy? My guy is Demarcus Lawrence. And I'll tell hey, you why. Yeah, bro. yeah I like oh, doing. You stole it I like that. <laughs> Better get another. You should wait first. <laughs> but Demarcus has came back, and he puts the energy into it. And you know, he loves the game. You know, you could see that. He loves being out there. He loves being a part of it. And he picks up everybody. And it's going to be big for him this week. He's got to pick up there. He's that kind of guy. And I like DeMarcus, and Let, I think that. Let's deviate real quick before we get to you two guys because you said something that I don't want to forget. Energy in a playoff game. Yes. And, and, and somebody that brings that extra attitude, brings what DeMarcus brings. You guys have both experienced it. Playoff football is, is, di is different, right? What does it mean for someone to bring how, – how important is energy and attitude? Energy is so important, and this is why I like this game playing at 330. Because in Dallas, at 12 o'clock, everybody getting home from church. Yep. And they done heard the good word and everything, mm -hmm. so they're a little bit quiet. But at 3.30, they done they're got good. home from church, they changed pulled. their church clothes. <laughs> they done got something to drink, and, and night, they ready to go. Night games. They've had, they drinking their church that's wine. Right, that's right. <laughs> night games, they've wine. had too much to drink, and they're tired by the time yeah, they get that's right. Around. So 3.30 is that's a good right. time. They're they're fired up, and that's the energy. They'll bring energy to this. Yes. Yeah. They'll bring, and that'll bring energy to the players. I think right. they just yeah. waking up from coming from the club at 6. Yep, yep. That's right. Oh, and all the people at the tailgate, they will already be toasty by the end. Oh, yeah. Walk yeah. into the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect time. Nate, yeah. They're going to be talking junk. You know, yes. if I'm a 49ers fan, and that, like they did in L.A., in SoFi Stadium, Don't try I'd that. be careful. Don't try that. This is Texas. Oh, <laughs> this is Texas. Who is that guy waking up? Who is that? Keep doing what you're doing for you, Chris. Who is that guy? On defense? Yeah. I'm going to say Trayvon Diggs. And the reason I'm going to say Trayvon Diggs is because there's a lot of people in the analytical world, need to put some respect on that man's oh, name. Oh, yeah. And I said respect with a K at the end of it. R-E-S-P-E-K. <laughs> it drives me crazy. He mm. leads the league in interceptions, right? He got 11 picks. Nobody has had 11. Nobody's had double-digit picks since Cubby Walls did it in 1981. It's one thing that he tied Everson Walls with 11. Nobody. All these great corners you've heard about from 1981 all the way to this year. Dion didn't do it. I love primetime. He's the greatest shutdown corner of all time. You could just name all Champ Bailey. You could name Woodson, Charles Woodson. You could name all of them. Hayes. 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 Yeah. Well, let's let yeah. Hayes and Hayes. Hayes. Well, Hayes died Mike before 81. Yeah. 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 But I'm yeah. talking about okay. since 81. Saying, Nobody. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. These analytical guys go. But he gives them all these yards. He's not really a great corner because he gives up all these yards. I'm going to tell you all something. You've got to 
do more than just the eyeball test, and I talked to Covey about this too. He does more than just what a typical co shutdown corner does. Typical shutdown corner, like Richard Sherman, I love Richard Sherman, and that's, that's who uh, uh, Trayvon's mentor is, or that's his, his idol. Richard Sherman don't travel. He take out one side of the field. Dion take out one side of the field, yeah. although Dion had traveled. Yeah. Trayvon <clears throat> Diggs goes with the best receiver yes. every game. Every game. Now, in this day and age, this is what Cubby and I were talking about. This day and age, it's a more passing league. It's more pass first. It's not balance. It's not run first. It's more passing first. Other teams are not going to not throw at their best receiver. Trayvon's on that best receiver. He going to give up some yards, but he might burn your ass. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Who's that's why I say keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who's your guy, Nate? Oh, my guy, man. My guy is, it, 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 I'm praying to God my guy don't be my guy after this year. That's Quinn. <laughs> well, yeah, Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn my God, please, please, Dan, oh, stay. Man. Don't go nowhere, Dan. Because, Jim, it's been a long time since we've had a defensive coach that say, they can sit, tell the owner, this is the, this is the plan I have for this player. I talked to him during training camp, and he told me, Almost every player that I asked, he had a plan for oh, him. Yeah. And he said, this is what I'm asking you You know he's a do. Jersey guy. Yeah, yeah. He's close to the yeah. middle yeah. 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 I'm just telling you, he's a yeah. Jersey guy. And so forget it, about Morristown. We, we, we quickly forget for seven, eight games, nine games, he didn't have his starting defensive front. That's right. For nine games, yeah. they never played together. And all of a sudden. Uh, After Thanksgiving. Yeah. DeMarcus Lawrence come back. You're right. Gallimore come back. Randy Gregory come. All these guys coming back. And. Now he, he knows who his guys are. Do he you, had a plan for them And all. you think this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. He took basically the same team that gave up the most yeah, points right. in Cowboy history right. and made them play like this. Right, right. Think about that. Yes. He got two yes. safeties. He's right. got two new safeties. Right. He got a new corner. Right. But he did that. So you got to give Dan credit. That yes. shows it. And George Edwards is there, too. And yes, yeah. sir, he George is. George is a tremendous. Yeah. And, and the cornerback coach, uh, uh, ha yeah, Harris. Harris. Al Harris. Al Harris. Yeah, Al Harris. They, yeah. And the thing that I like about them is they all on the same page. Yes. And yeah. I, we saw personally, me and this guy here, doing training camp, we personally saw how he would, on certain days or certain periods, he would go with certain groups and put his hands on. Them. Yes. And players like that. Yeah. Man. Well, players do. like oh, to know yeah. that you care yeah, about. Yeah. He was do. down in the stands, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 He, he does that. All right, let's flip it. Other side, I might steal somebody's here. Okay. But my, but my keep doing what you're doing, young man, guy on offense is going to be Cedric Wilson for me. Oh, shit. Like, has, I, I know you. I know you. Yeah. Give that man I know you all that. Stepped yeah. in. Stepped in. We're going to have to bump you again, Has Shannon. done nothing but what they <laughs> asked him to do. And, look, I hate, the, I hate Training what happened. Training camp, man. I, stop, Nate. I hate what happened to Michael Gallup. Yeah. I, like, great guy. He is. Amazing player. Nobody's better on the sidelines with body control and knowing where he's at on the field. 50-50, man. But, yeah, but with what Cedric's done this year, he's given this team confidence. Like, you've got a number three that can do what you need to do. And throw football. And throw football and can run and yeah. can return. So. And play special. You're right. So, You're right. So, I mean, that, that, that's my guy. No, it's a good one. You want to hear something wild about him real quick? Yeah. He grew up with Tony Pollard in Memphis. Him and Tony Pollard been knowing each other since grade school. Did not wow, know that. Wow, I didn't know that. Wild? That is yeah, great. I didn't know yeah. that. Wound up here in Dallas. Who's your guy, Jeff? It's got to be Tony Pollard. <laughs> it's got to be Tony yeah. Pollard. Him the because of what you ask him yeah. to do, and he does it, and you ask him, he can get out wide. He can be like a receiver. He can run inside the uh, tackles. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can do anything you ask him and never complains. He just goes out there and does it. I mean, he's that kind of different. He's different than Zeke. Zeke is a big, powerful guy. Right, right. But he can get through those little holes. Yeah, the and dirty yards. Yeah, he can get those dirty yards. And he's going to have to be big this week. It's kind of good that he took last week off, get his foot right and everything. Yeah, plantar fasciitis. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And it'll come down. But. He's no question he's going to be big in this game. Chris, you're keep doing what you're doing, young man, on offense. Who's your guy? Dalton Schultz. I like it. Dalton Schultz, mm -hmm. the tight end. I like it. Let me tell you something. He did something in the offseason. He told me this, that uh, George Kittle had a, a camp. There was a little tight end camp. That all the great tight ends. He got invited to it. So he got to learn some of the little tricks and trades, the little secrets. And, again, as you mentioned this earlier, Jim, if the wide receivers are covered, and if the running backs ain't doing it out the backfield, that middle ground is wide open. And he's been catching the ball. He caught two touchdowns last week. He caught two touchdowns. He caught two touchdowns 
and Cedric Wilson caught two touchdowns. Y'all will never guess when the last time two, two players caught two touchdowns for the Dallas Cowboys. I'll give you the year. It was 2006. Wow. And you'll never guess who the two players were. Brad Shem asked Babe Laufenberg this late in the game on the radio, and I was like, I'm trying to think of it too. I said, 2006, <laughs> Romo was a quarterback. Who was, and everybody was guessing. He said, you'll never guess this, Babe. So I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all. Tell us. You would think, okay, it's a wide receiver, maybe a tight end. Or it was Marion Barber. And Felix? No, 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 no. It wasn't Felix. Felix wasn't there yet. God, dog, I'm forgetting the other guy. <laughs> it was a uh, cool story, Chris. <laughs> it's killing me now. I just can't believe I forgot that. I will tell you before the show's over. That's a hell of a team. I know Jesse been to text. Yeah, text Jesse. Text, 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 text Jesse. It was <laughs> Mary, because Mary, nobody would have guessed Marion Barber. No. He was one of them. Yeah, the other that. one, I don't want to say it was Witten. I want to say it was it wasn't T.O. either. And it wasn't Dez. No, it wasn't Dez. This was in 2006. Okay. Oh, it was um, Miles. Terry, no, it was Glenn. Terry, Terry Glenn. Glenn. Terry Glenn. Terry I Glenn can see that. And, and Marion Barber. Yeah, Terry Glenn was a tremendous Thank player. Thank y'all for being with God me. God rest his soul. Yes, he yeah. was. He's a great guy. Nate, wow. who's your guy? They don't throw to him enough. You know who that is. They got to throw to him to make this game. Number 19? Yes, sir. Amare. Right. Yeah. Ooh, they got to. They got. Bro. Yeah, he got to keep doing what they ain't Ooh. letting him been do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Get him involved. Do let's yes, talk sir. about that in the last segment. Good things happen when you throw the 19. Yeah. I was going to say, let's. Uh, how important is it that they get him involved early and often in this game? We'll talk about that. We might give some predictions. I know it's early in the week. We'll see if we can talk Chris into giving us one on Wednesday. If not, we I'm sure we can get one from, from Nate and, uh, and Jim down there at the end of the table. We'll be right back. You're listening to Dallas Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Welcome back to the beautiful Cowboys Club here in Frisco, Texas for our last segment of the first of many shows. We're doing this until training camp, fellas. Hopefully. <laughs> SWBC. They will sponsor that because they'll be the world champion Cowboys. They will. SWBC PEO helping to alleviate the HR administrative burden that comes with running a business. Leave the worrying to us. Visit SWBCPEO.com to find out more. Shannon Gross, Chris Arnold, Nate Newton, and our guest of honor, Jim Jeffcoat, tonight on the show. So, fellas, how important is it, Nate? You brought this guy up last segment, number 19. They have way underutilized that, this guy this year for whatever reason. How important is it in a game like this that they get him involved early and often? The 49ers can seem to do it with Debo Samuel. If they can't do it throwing him the ball, they put him in the backfield. They, they get him involved in the offense. How important is it that 19 gets involved in this game early? Everything, but like I was, we, we talked about it earlier. It, it, it's, you have to be elite to set coverage. You just can't be anybody. You know, the Michael Irvins of the world. I'm talking when we played the Jer Jerry Rice of the world. You had, to, you had to know where they were and had to cover them. And sometimes you want to bring an extra guy, whether it's an outside linebacker taking away the slant from Mike or something like that. Or uh, safety, you know, trying to stay deep because Jerry Rice hit that skinny post of the seam. So you, you got to do something. Amari is big enough, fast enough, quick enough that he, know, he, he don't have to lead the field. He's a great red zone player. He's a great goal line player because he's so big. He can body people up. So it, it behooves the offensive coordinator to make sure, you know, the first 10 or 12 passes, he, he ought to see four of them, five of them at least. At least, you know, just to make them set their yeah. defense. Yeah. I help set the defense. Mm -hmm. Jeff? The thing I look at is the stars have got to rise. Yes. The big time players got to play big time. Big time players play big time and big time games. Right. And this is the biggest game. The Amaris. The DeMarcus, the Micahs, the Dax, the Dats, they got to play big. Zeke. They got to gotta play big because, like I always said, there ain't no tomorrows. This is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is it. If you win, you get to play another week. If you don't, you go home. You know, I don't know if Jimmy, you know, Jimmy kind of loved the defense, but he would come in our offensive meeting room. I'm talking about the offensive lineman. And he, sometimes he would just stop by, hey, you know, he'll look in the room. Just checking on you guys. We really need for y'all to, you That's know, right. make sure Troy's standing too. up. We need to make sure <laughs> Troy's standing up. Let's yeah. just go along, you know, because he believed the same as Jeff believed at Jeff Coach. If your stars don't show up, uh, you don't make it where your stars can compete yep. and be the best they can be. That's on you as a coach. That's no on question. you as a coach, no man. No question. And, and so you have that, to do that. we had to take that as offensive lineman. Yeah. We had to take that personal, like, okay, coach stopped by and said, hey, man, just making sure you guys are all right. We need Troy to be up. Yep. Hey, we play against some nice defense That's right. Lyman, man. Yeah, that were more athletic than us, you know. So. And then they come in our room and tell us, hey, <laughs> you know I'm an old D-line coach. Y'all better show up tomorrow. Right. And he say that. Yeah. And, he, you know, that's why at the, when we play San Francisco here, yes. that's why he said that. Yeah. He guaranteed it because he wanted to put pressure on all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wanted us to show up. Show up, Because man. now he said, and we asked him, and said, well, what if we would have lost? He said, ah, oh, they would have forget about it. In a couple <laughs> <of minutes. laughs> they would have yeah. forgot about yeah. it. Yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to our, before we do predictions here in a minute, let's get to our brass tax moment presented by Liberty Tax. Liberty Tax is a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Join the team today at libertytax.com forward slash cowboys. Chris, this is the part of the show where you jumped the gun a couple of segments ago. What are your what are your keys to a Cowboys victory? What do the Cowboys need to do to win this game on Sunday? Dak Prescott, first of all, Ezekiel Elliott in the run game, Zeke and Tony have got to be weaponized. You've got to create that balance so that we were talking about this earlier, that 49ers don't do that uh, cover two. They don't put that shell on the top and move that safety. they got to keep him down close so that Dak can create the – big plays for Amari or get the ball to uh, Sed Wilson or, or whatever they need to do or CD. And by the way, CD Lamb might be running the ball like he did a couple of times this year as well. Those are called unscouted plays. There'll be some surprises that, that uh, Kellen Moore's going to – I want to see some unscouted plays, some surprises, but I also want to see Dak Prescott basically do everything he can to win this game. 
And, and the reason why I say that is because he's the leader of the team. If he's successful, I think they will all be successful. My other little note that they got a, the other key to the game, the Cowboys' defense has to create takeaways. The offense isn't the only team that needs to score. I think the Cowboys' defense will score because they are that explosive. I think the offense feeds off the defense. Defense feeds off the offense. That's why this whole team is one. And I think, uh, you know, if those two things happen, the Dallas Cowboys win the game. The thing, they, the thing they have to do is not give them unforced errors. That means, you know, obviously. Turnovers. Turnovers. That mm -hmm. and um, offsides. Right. Um, penalties. And, and penalties. Yeah. That's what I'm Drops. talking about. Drops. Mm -hmm. But not really the penalties. The unforced errors. The team that's in the NFL, leading the NFL in penalties is right now is the Cowboys. Yep. The Green Bay Packers are on the other end of the spectrum. We cannot have unforced errors. We can't have that. We can't have it offsides. We can't have holding. You can't blame the refs because they're going to call the game the way they're going to call it. You got to go out there and say, hey, I'm not going to put myself in this situation offensively or defensively. That's going to be the key. If you got more than seven penalties, you got problems. Like, what are your keys, Nate? My keys is I need to see Dak be the rookie Dak. Yeah. Where he, where he wasn't going to make those mistakes. Yep. And he was going to do any and everything. Might even run. Mm -hmm. Might even yeah. run. You mm -hmm. know what? That right there needs to go out the window. You mean Mississippi State Dak? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I mean rookie Dak. Rookie Dak did whatever it took. He could be. He could have played a bad game. Mm -hmm. You knew when the game came down to closing down, he, whether, he, whether he was going to run, whether he was going to pass, he was going to do whatever it, it took to win and see, I, I, I went along with the, hey, you know, be careful, protect yourself. But you know what? You can lick your wounds because if you lose the game, you got a whole offseason to think about it. Exactly. If you win the game, you just did what it took to win the game. That's what it is. I That's need to it, see huh? Rookie Dak, man. It's as simple as that for me. Because the best quarterback normally wins the game. No question. Right. No question. Yeah. You're right about that. I think, yeah. we, I think we got the best one in this game for sure. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy G. Somebody got to grab that thumb. Like I said, be a man. <laughs> grab that thumb. I think it's, uh, what is it? Which Tristan, on the right Tristan hand or left Hill, hand? Hill, the, the, the middle, the, 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 middle, the uh, interior. Defense defense. tackle. Yeah, it's his job. Gallimore. Yeah. He got that attitude. Gallimore, I like yeah. Gallimore. I like <laughs> Gallimore, do it too. Yeah, Which hand Noel. is it for Jimmy G? It's the throwing hand. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing hand. It's his right hand. Yeah. Yep. All right, yeah. fellas, that time of the show. You want to give us a prediction, Chris? I know it's Wednesday. Yeah, I'm going to do this because I truly think that Shanahan wants to control the tempo and the clock and all those things because he knows his quarterback's not great. I'm thinking it's going to be a close game, and I think it's going to be the final score. Cowboy, remember, this game against the Cardinals here, it was only 25 to 22. I'm expecting the Cowboys to win this game 28 to 24. I like it. I like it. I like this, and um – the Cowboys, as we all know, got to stop the run, and they got to be physical. And I think it's going to be 27-21. Six points, like I said. Mm -hmm. Six <laughs> points. Nate. Yeah, it's like the, the, the betters, the odds makers. Yes. Nate? I only need one point. I just need <laughs> <laughs> Every I need the week. Yeah. I need to victory. We've been man. doing this for 18 weeks, <laughs> and Nate has had the same point spread every week. Yeah. But you know Cowboys what? Cowboys by one. But you know what? This is why he's right, and that's how come people didn't respect that uh, three-game road winning streak in December. It wasn't about – now, don't get me wrong. We all wanted the offense to do better. Mm -hmm. But there are some people – too many people losing their minds. They yes. won the damn game. Yes. It, it, it was ugly. But you win by any means necessary. No question. And they did that. And that's why they finished December 4-0, finished the season 12-5. and They swept the division, the only team in the NFL to sweep their own division and only lost two games in the NFC. Yeah, what is it they say, give me an ugly loss over a pretty win any Thank day? You. Well, Thank you. Thank um, you. What is it? No. Saying? Ugly, 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 ugly win over a pretty – I said it backwards. Don't worry about it. We know what you mean. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to say I'm with you, Chris. I think it's in the 20s. I think it's going to be super close. I'm going to go, though, 27-24. I think it's going to be like three points. So where are you guys watching the game this weekend? I'm, I'm watching there. the I'm going to be at the stadium. I'll be at the stadium, yeah. I'll be at the stadium too. Do you do, what yeah, do, you, yeah. you do stuff for the station at the yeah, stadium? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you do for, for, for one of Post-game stuff. Post-game? You on post-game yeah, show? Yeah, the post-post game I knew that. I listened to you, I listened to yeah, you every in night. the car. That's right. Mm -hmm. Nate, you got the pregame stuff at DallasCowboys.com? At, at the stadium. And, and where will you be 
Jim, where I'll be you at the stadium up in the suites. Oh, yeah, the, you know. We all the game. Get Big you dogs up, run like that. Get That's you up right. on the, oh, on the oh, jumbo where, 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 where the Super Bowl oh, ring. Oh, up on the jumbo right. tron. All right. Well, Chris Arnold, thank you for any time, man. Come anytime, on back. Jim. Nate, thank good seeing you. Seeing you. Jim, Jim Jeffcoat, our Jim. guest of honor Jim, tonight. Jim, 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 this Jim. is not the last Cowboys crosstown. We'll be back next week because the Cowboys yes. are going to the Super Bowl. Now you know. Dallas Cowboys crosstalk. See you next week. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!